Hey folks, this is Mr. Woodward. Let's talk about uh, analyzing data using curve fits, okay? So um, taking a look here, suppose you're running an experiment about some quantity Z and you wanna know how different variables A, B, C, D, and E each affect this quantity Z. So for example, let's say you're running an experiment about how changes in a plant's environment affect its growth height. So um, maybe those variables might be things like the amount that you water the plant or the uh, number of minutes of sunshine the plant gets each day or the humidity of the air or the, uh, the, the wind speed um, by the plant. Okay, So you have a bunch of different variables and you're each measuring how they affect quantity Z, which in this case would be the height of the plant. Okay, Well, you would run five experiments, one for each variable. You would collect data and you would graph that data against quantity Z. Then in order to identify the mathematical relationship between each variable and quantity Z, and by the way, this is useful for interpolation and extrapolation, you would apply different mathematical curve fits to see which matches the data the best. And so this is how it might look. Um, let's say in your first experiment, you're measuring the effect of variable A, could be the amount that you water the plant, the amount of sunshine the plant, sunshine the plant gets, um, on uh, how it affects quantity Z, okay? So you would do, uh, in your graph, you would, you'd put Z on the y-axis and you would put A on the x-axis. And let's say that um, as you increase A, you notice um, that quantity Z goes up and it goes up in a straight line like this, okay? And maybe it doesn't perfectly go up in a straight line. Maybe there's some you know, data where it kind of wobbles a little bit, but in general, the trend is up and to the right. Um, well, you would draw a curve fit like this straight through the um, center of that data. And this kind of curve fit is called a linear curve, okay? And the equation of this line would be y equals mx plus b, because that's the equation of a straight line, okay? Well, let's say you moved to the next variable, variable b, and now you're going to measure the effect of variable b, and I'll change color here. <clears throat> let's say variable b something different, but you're still going to measure um, its effect on quantity Z. Well, now you notice that um, as you increase B, you see um, something more like this, okay? And again, maybe there's a little bit of wobble in that data, but in general, it's, it's kind of doing something like this. It's curving, okay? Well, this is what a quadratic relationship looks like. And it has the equation y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Uh, or it could be simplified to just y equals ax squared. Okay, um, In the same way, the uh, linear equation could be simplified to just y equals mx, Okay, where m is the slope of that linear equation. <clears throat> All right, so so far we have a linear graph now we have a quadratic graph or a linear relationship and a quadratic uh, relationship. Let's keep going. What if now you measured a new variable, variable C, against, again, this thing Z that you're measuring? Well, now you notice that um, when C is very, very small, you actually don't get numbers close to zero. You actually get really, really large values, okay? So you're actually starting up here. And then as you begin to increase C, you notice that the value of C starts to drop. But then as you continue to increase C, the value actually starts to taper off kind of like this, okay? This is a classic inverse relationship. And the equation of that line is Y equals um, A over X, okay? Or sometimes one over X, right? In the, in the in this case, um, A would just be equal to 1, okay? The idea is that as this variable increases, uh, this variable actually decreases. Now, by the way, um, <clears throat> what if you actually got this instead? As you increase the value, it formed a straight line like this. That would not be an inverse relationship. That would just be another linear relationship with the equation Y equals MX plus B, okay? So just because the graph is going down and to the right, doesn't mean that it's an inverse relationship. All right, let's keep going. Let's say we change the variable and now we go to variable 
D. So here's variable D. Uh, we're measuring its effect on quantity Z, and we notice that as we increase uh, variable D, um, it does something similar to inverse, but it's much more dramatic. Okay, and it's actually dropping it. <clears throat> as, as you increase D, you get these uh, quickly diminishing values for variable Z. Okay, this is also an inverse relationship, but it's a particular kind called an inverse square relationship, okay? Where you're getting y equals a over x squared, okay? Or um, if a is one, one over x squared, okay? So now as you begin to increase quantity or variable d, you very quickly get these small values for quantity z. The last kind of common possibility that you'll see um, in an experiment is uh, this relationship. What if now you've got a new variable, variable E, and you're measuring it against quantity Z, but you find that as you increase um, E, uh, you might see this. You might see that the value of Z starts here. And as you increase E, um, the value of Z kind of just stays put. It doesn't really seem to change, okay? You end up getting a flat line relationship. Or maybe as you increase um, E, the value of Z just remains at zero the whole time, okay? If you're getting a flat line that, like that, then there's actually no correlation between E and Z. There's no effect on Z when you increase E, okay? So um, there's, there's no particular name for that. It's just that there's no relationship. And so um, this is just completely not applicable, okay? There would be no, no equation for that. They, you would say that they're not correlated. All right, <clears throat> so of the ones that actually affected uh, variable Z, um, we have these first four experiments that all affected um, Z. Well, if these four variables could somehow be like put together into one common equation that unifies them all, that would be a really powerful equation, okay? Then if we had some future situation where we like knew the value of A, knew the value of B, knew the value of C, and knew the value of D, we could sort of punch them into this equation and know instantly what the value of Z is going to be, okay? How would we go about like identifying that unifying equation? Well, we would just take each of these equations and, um, and combine them, okay, like this. We would see that variable z is linearly related to um, a, and it's quadratically related to b, so we use b squared, and it's inversely related to c, and it's, in, it's got an inverse square relationship to quantity d, okay? And then, of course, variable e had no relationship, so we can ignore that one altogether, okay? This would be the unifying equation for all of them. And then oftentimes there's like a coefficient uh, in front of all this, um, which I'll just call x, <clears throat> which is some, you know, magic number um, that makes the whole equation work together in real life, okay? This is a coefficient, All right, so in general, um, that is how you go from looking at a graph uh, of a relationship to then coming up with an equation uh, that identifies how all of these variables affect some quantity.